By this point, you have inevitably learned that just because your code compiles does not mean that it's actually correct and that it will do what you want. So we've written our array queue and our array stack, but we haven't actually tested them on anything. Up until this point, you've probably done your testing by just creating a main and putting some code in it and running it to see if things work. But there is a more kind of standardized way of doing testing referred to as unit testing. Uh, and it is intended for testing small units of code, like a single class, like the array stack. There are actually many unit testing frameworks, and we are going to use one of the kind of older, more established ones. It's called JUnit. You can find JUnit online at JUnit.org. Uh, and we can add JUnit to our code. We right click and we go to build path add libraries. One of the libraries is the JUnit library. We're going to use JUnit 4 and now that gets added into our project so that we have access to it. Especially for Scala there are newer uh, unit test suites. Uh, Scala test is is one of the is a very popular one. There's also one called Specs. Um, and they have lots of features actually that go beyond what JUnit has, but they require more setup. And JUnit is actually used very broadly. The J is for Java. Uh, so JUnit is kind of an, an industry standard unit testing framework. Uh, so instead of showing you some of the one of the some of the newer, more modern ones, I'm going to show you one that is used kind of across industry and that's very easy to get to inside of Eclipse. So after we've added that to our library, I need to write some test code. Now I'm actually going to make a whole separate package for this called test. And all of our test code for everything that we do is going to go inside of there. So I'm going to create a package inside of test that mirrors our normal package. So stack queue. And then inside of this, we are going to make a class and first we'll test our stack. So I'm going to call it test array stack. Okay. In order to make this run as unit tests, I need to start putting some methods in there and I have to annotate them. Recall that annotations are added with an ampersand and the JUnit annotation for a test is at test. So I could do something simple here. I'm going to create a test that will check to see if a stack is empty right after I've created it. So val stack equals new stack of int. We'll do some imports here. So I want to bring in, actually this isn't going, it isn't going to like that, but um, JUnit test, we need to make an array stack because you can't instantiate a normal stack. Okay, and then I want to say that this needs to be empty. And so the JUnit library comes with a number of uh, assert methods that are inside of a class called assert. And I want to assert in this case that something is true. The thing that should be true is stack dot is empty. And to get the assert true, <coughs> I could do an import for each individual assert but I'm actually going to junit.assert.underscore. That'll bring in all of the different <clears throat> asserts that we might want to use. We also might use some different annotations, so I'm going to change this with an underscore so it brings in everything as well. Okay. How about we write one or two other little tests in here? So at test, um, 
how about we push something and check that it's non-empty? So non-empty on push. One of the things about unit tests, and I need to make my stack, is that they should generally test something that is very small. Okay, so and each test should test something different. So I'm going to push a one, and then I'm going to assert false stack dot is empty. Okay, so this checks that all this does is it checks that when we create a new stack, it's empty. This checks that if I create a stack and I push something to it, it's not empty. Uh, I should push something and make sure that I can peek it and uh, uh, and pop it. So I'll call this push pop one. Once again, I need a stack. In fact, the fact that I am copying and pasting that should point to the fact there should be a better way of, of doing this. Stack dot push of 42. And then I want to assert equals. And note, the first thing should be the expected value. I pushed in a 42. And I want to check that against stack dot peak. And then I also want to test it against stack dot pop. Once I have this written, this is sufficient for us to to at least try running this. Under the run menu, in fact, let's see if I can do it up here where you can actually see it. Run as, you'll see this says Scala J unit test. And I run that. And over here, it popped up the J unit test. I think I might actually want my J unit test. Oh, I want it there, okay. Down in here. And with unit tests, you, the thing that matters, you only get this bar that is color coded to tell you whether things worked or not. So this is a green bar. Green says for good. Uh, if I had an error, then I would get a red bar. Now these tests aren't very thorough yet. One of the big things we haven't tested is we haven't added enough stuff for us to make sure that the uh, um, that our growing code is is correct. Uh, we'll We'll add that probably in a, I'll, I'll add it offline and we'll come and look through these. But before I do that, there is this code that keeps getting repeated. Before every test, I have to make a new stack. And turns out there is an annotation that you can provide to a method that should happen before all the other tests. And note that all these tests are run separately. Part of the reason for putting making each test small is that even if one of these fails, all the others will still run. And so having those small tests that test for something in particular really helps you to pinpoint what's going wrong. So I'm going to make stack be a var of stack int. And you know this is something I would not want to do in my production code here. But then I can have an at before of um, make stack and inside of here we'll set stack equal new array stack of int and we save that and then I don't need all of these lines that build stacks because that will happen before each and every test. And I just reran the tests and I, I got a green bar. There are a number of other things that we could test. Oh, I'm actually going to write them offline and then we'll look at some of them. And then we should also write tests for our queues because it turns out when I write the array stack, I actually feel pretty good about this code. There's not too much I can mess up in, in this code. Uh, but there were some details in here in the queue in growing it that I'm not as certain about. And so I would definitely want to do some unit testing to make sure that, that I haven't messed something up inside of this queue. So we'll come back and we'll look at that in the next video.